guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Philip, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a game on Scratch that I like to call the snake game where basically it's a two player game where each player has their snake and they try not to hit each other or themselves. So let's give you an example. So and then if obviously if they touch the sides or the the edge or themselves or the other person then it says I died now in this game I'm gonna be showing you guys an extension that's called pen so let's get started click the create button and the first thing we are going to do is get the sprite so well first we need to delete the cat sprite and we can get a sprite now for the snake, it's not actually going to be a snake sprite. It's going to be a lot of, like, for example, balls that are going to make up the snake. So we can see there's a ball or there's, like, a button. I think I'll use the button. So first, let's make it smaller. And the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure it always is moving. Like, even if you don't press any keys it's always moving and then when you press a key it changes its direction so for that we will need a variable which will basically just remember the current direction that this button is moving in so let's make a variable and we can name it current direction and then it doesn't really matter if it's for the sprite only or for all sprites because we're not going to change the value of current direction in any of the other sprites. So, okay, and we can start coding. So, the first thing we can do, when green flag clicked, and then we need to do a forever. But before that forever, we need to set current direction to, let's say, up. Or, I mean, it can go, we can set it to up, down, right, or left, whatever we want. I'm just going to go with up for sh for like the start and we will need to make four ifs one for each direction up down left and right so we can go ahead and do that the first if make sure they're in the forever and the first if they're all going to basically be somewhat the same it'll be like if current direction equals up or if current direction equals down or left or right then we will change the x or the y depending which direction it's going. So we can start off with something like current direction, if current direction equals up. Then, since it's going up, we need to change the Y. The Y, yeah. So change Y by 10. And you can see that, here, let's position it over here. And it's always going up because here I set current direction to up. So now let's go ahead and duplicate this if, and we can do if it's going down, then it's going to it's going to change the y by minus ten. So right now it's never going to be down. So let's just test it and just set it at the beginning to down. So there you go. And then we can duplicate this as well. And we can do left and right. So left, we can do first. And we have to change the x by something. So when it's going left, you have to change the x by minus 10. And then when it's going right, then we have to change by 10. So let's test both of them. There you go. It's going left when I set it to left at the beginning. And let's test the last one right. Where I forgot to change this to change x by, and then yeah, we need 10. So here, let's just test it one more time. And there you go. It's good. Now we can do the next step where we are going to change its direction, the button's direction, by using the keys. So 
we can actually go to events and we can do when uh, a key is pressed. So we can do when up arrow key pressed. Then we have to, whoops, then we have to set the current direction to up, okay? So set current direction to up, because that's what it is over here. And we can do the same thing for down, left, and right. So just basically over here, change this to down, and then change this to down. And we can do the same things for the right and left. So when left arrow key press, set current direction to left. So now let's test it. And you can see that it's whenever I click an arrow, that's the direction it goes. So let's do the next step. Where we are going to need to leave, like leave a trail behind the button. So we can do that by using clones. So I'll go to the bottom of control. And here is the create clone of myself. Let's zoom out because I can't see. Maybe that's too much zoom out. So let's move these two. And we can place this right here. Let's test it. So click that and you can see that it works. Let's Play around with it and just make sure it works. No, it, we can see that it stops leaving things behind after a while. And that is because there's a limit of making clones. And that limit is 300. So after it makes 300 clones, it'll stop making clones. So we need to find another, like, another way to do this because Otherwise, it will just end at 300 clones. So, um, there's this cool little extension here, if you click this blue button, that is called Pen. And it lets you draw on the screen, like leave something behind. Or it lets you basically just draw on the screen. So, click on it. And here it is. It just adds these blocks down here. And we can actually do... We can do, um, when I start as a clone, it can just like, there's this right here, it says stamp. Stamp basically will, um, like stamp, like it, the button, the picture of the button, this right here, it'll stamp that right behind it. Like, so we can do that. And then at the end, don't forget, delete this clone. So let's start and let's wait for it to reach or what we think is 300 clones and then we can see if it actually works so i'm pretty sure that's about 300 clones so you can see it, it keeps on producing the clones but they're not actually clones they're just the stamps like stamps of the button so now we can do the next step where we're basically going to say if the button touches any of its stamps, well, basically that color, then it will die. So first, you can see that after I pause the game, every single um, stamp thing stays on the screen. So if we go back to pen, we can at the very, we, at the very beginning, we can just do this right here, erase all, and we can get to what we were trying to do. So we need the if obviously because it's going to be if touching color so let's get that if let's try to put it here and if touching color that's in the sensing and then we need to find that exact color on the screen that's like on the very edge so there i think that's pretty close to it. So if touching that, then just we can say dead. Say I died for two seconds and then stop. Oh, 
So let's start the game. And you can see that automatically when the game starts, it says I died because it, it stamps like right when it starts. So we need to delay the display of the color on the button. So we can do that by getting here and we can put a repeat and let's try 10 times. And in that repeat, we're basically going to change the color. So go to looks and we can change color effect by, let's not try 25, let's try like five. And we can try it and you can see that Um, here, let's try it, and it still doesn't work because it's trying to go right because you see up here, it's set current direction to right, so it's trying to go right. So you can see that if we position it all the way over here, it pretty much works. And let's see if it works when I press all the keys. So let's try it left, then I die because it is touching the color its color but the thing is is right now it's touching the green if touching green well it actually has to it be the if touching this like blue so you can change this to the inside of that or like the outside and we can try And we can see that that pretty much works. And when it touches that, it says, I die. So now let's test if we need a um, if that says if touching edge. So we can test that. Click. And we can see that when it touches this edge, it already says it died because after time, after like one second, it touches the blue. And if it touches the blue, it says, I died. Now let's try if we go up. If we go up, it says, I died. Now, if we go down, it doesn't say I died. And if we go, wait, whoops. If we go to the left, it doesn't say. So I guess we do need the if. Let's make the if. Um, don't put the If touching edge, all right? So if touching edge, then we need to say I died and stop off. That sound better. So now let's try. And yeah, at the beginning it does start on the edge, so we can let it start at negative 200, 200, negative 200. Let's try that, and you can see that when touches the edge on any side. But let's try. But it should try. It should work when it touches the edge on any side. It should say I died. There you go. So now let's do the next step where we're basically just going to duplicate this button and make a second snake. So let's duplicate. And first thing we're going to do to this new sprite, this duplicated sprite, is change the costume because we don't want it to be the same color. So you can see that this button here has two parts, the outside part and the inside part. Let's start by changing the outside part. So we can make it a blue. You can, yeah, if you want. I'm gonna make it a blue. There you go. And you can see that here, it has this swap thing. And that's because this side of the circle isn't gonna be the same color as this side of the circle unless you make it be. So we're gonna go here and we are going to make this other side of the circle a very, light blue oh whoops so yeah we're gonna make this side of the circle a very light blue and then the middle is going to be a blue with we can we can leave the goldish yellowish color in the middle because that looks pretty cool but maybe we can make this more of a blue not a purple so i think that is good right there that's good so now let's go back to the code and let's change some things the first thing we are going to change is we need a completely new variable which we can call current direction two 
obviously, like the last, like the other current direction, it can be any of these because we're not going to be changing the value of it in the other sprite. So, okay. And now we're just going to change everywhere where it says current direction. We're going to put current direction 2. So, let's do that. And then we're going to change a couple more things. So, that's it for over there. Now we have to also change it over here. Current direction 2. All right. So there you go. I changed them all. Now, the first thing we have to do is make it positioned at 200, the other side of the screen. And we need not just if touching this color. If it's touching the color behind this one, then it should also die. Now, we also need to change the arrows we use to control it. So we can change the arrows first. Now the right is going to be, I'm going to make it C, the right, and then the left can be Z. Now obviously we can make it whatever keys or numbers you want it to be. Now up is going to be S, and then down can be X. All right, so once you've got the keys you wanted, now we can change the color, if touching color thing. So go to operators and we can do the or. If, well, whoops, if touching color this, where did it go? Here it is. So if touching color this color or this pink color I see over here, then it will die. So let's pick that pink, and there it is. And we can just basically go ahead and test it. Here we go. And yeah, at the beginning, it's going right, because that's how I set it up here. So that's why it's directly crashing. So we, let's just make it go to the left. So I see it's good. And I also see down here that there are two ifs, and one of them is if touching color or touching color, and one of them is if touching edge. And if any of those are true for both ifs, you do the same thing. You say I died for two seconds and then stop off. So I can just basically add another or for this if, and then I don't have to make two ifs. I can just make one if. So, here you go. And now we can go ahead and duplicate this and put it in this code. Here it is. And here we do have to take this out. So now let's just test and make sure it's good. Okay, so All right, so yeah, when it touches the color, it says I died, or if it touches the edge. Now we can go ahead and add a background and then name the project, and that's basically it. So let's see, let's see if we can find a good background. Hmm. These uh, star background, this like space background looks pretty cool. Yeah, and that looks, yeah. And then we can name it, like, for example, Snake Game, I guess. And thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video, and I'll see you next time for another game you can make on Scratch.